Okay. All right. Oh, you get it in my back. Okay. Hello. I don't know if anybody's here yet. I don't think there are. Um, not one hundred percent sure. How to tell? There's a. I can check. I said hello in the chat. <clears throat> right, let's see. Does it tell me how many people are connected? Mm, I wouldn't know where to look. So I don't know. Oh, yep, there are people here. Okay, well, that definitely answers the question that there are people here. Okay, so this is going to be a video on uh, some tips on how to build stuff. <laughs> it's always about that, right? This one's going to be about... Um, sorry, I'm going to take my headphones off. So it's about making textures to work with 3D objects and, and why... Um, it, it's better to do this than just slapping a texture onto something. So let's talk about that real briefly. So if you take an object, any kind of object whatsoever, let's just build something here with a cube. Uh, I'm going to go build. And I'll drop a cube. Or maybe I won't drop a cube. Drop a cube. There it is. All right. So I got a cube here. And we'll stretch that, make it bigger so I don't have to squint. Okay, so now I got a bigger cube. And, you know, these cubes, they come with this really nice plywood texture on them already. But you can put textures on there. <clears throat> so if I wanted to add a texture, I could just go to my inventory and say, let me find something like a plaid. Wow, I have all the ones that I've made. Let's just, what is this? This will down plaid for. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we'll put it on there. Okay, so you just drag it on there, and it looks like that. All right. Um, the term for what it looks like to me is called flat. There's 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 no shading. There's no no anything really other than just the texture on the side of this this cube. Um, it looks a little shaded because I have my graphics in ultra mode. So let's simplify my graphics down so that you don't see it so so purdy. I'll just take off ambient occlusion. Now, there you go. Now it looks pretty flat, right? That's what I mean by flat. So we're going to have a little bit of a lesson on what ambient occlusion is. So here you can see on the surface, I don't know if you can see my cursor as I move, but the, along the edges where the two surfaces meet, there's no shading. It's just the the surface of this texture looks exactly the same in this corner as it does down here, as it does in the middle, as far as shading and the natural look of things. Some people call that cartoony. It's like old style, um, I don't know, Hanna-Barbera cartoons where they saved money by not putting shadows in. And so everything is just flat. There's no, to create 3D illusions, you need shading because real 3D things in real life have shading that naturally occurs when you have a curved surface you're going to have uh, depending on where your light source is there's going to be a lighter side and a darker side and it's going to be a, like a gradient it's going to go from a dark to a to a light gradually in a very natural manner you also have that where two surfaces meet and that's what ambient occlusion is ambient occlusion occlusion is the shadowing that occurs where two surfaces meet. And so you can see right here, there's no shadow on the ground, and there's no shadow at this edge where the two surfaces meet. You would also have some sh shadows here. You would have them there as well. So I'm going to turn ambient occlusion back on, and you can see what I'm talking about. So there it is with ambient occlusion on. And you notice it looks darker, and it's um, it's got some shading going on around the edges. And if I turn it back off, you can see it goes back to flat. So by turning this on in my viewer, it allows, in this case, it's Firestorm. It allows Firestorm to generate ambient occlusion for me where surfaces meet. Um, but not everybody has, you know, advanced lighting model, 
and or the ability to, to do that and ambient occlusion turned on. So, um, you know, they walk around and Second Life looks like this all the time. So that's a, just a cube. You can see it's, it's not as easy to understand when you look at this cube as it would be on a, on a more complex model, but let's look at that. So here you go. This is a bed that I made. And right now, ambient occlusion is off, right? Yep, ambient occlusion is off. Let's turn off advanced lightning model too. Okay, now it's really looking flat. So there is a little bit of shadows. You can see there's a, this is darker than this. And I have no textures applied to this. This is just plain solid blank. But if I turn advanced lighting back on and ambient occlusion back on, now you notice that it looks more realistic. So there's shading in this uh, lower area. There's shading here on the sides of these creases and things. So um, what we want to do when we create textures for 3D models is we want to replicate for the, to make it look the, as good as it can possibly look. You want to replicate that kind of effect um, in a graphics tool like Photoshop or GIMP to kind of bake the ambient occlusion into the texture that you use so and make it so that it, it fits your model. You also want to try to make it so that it looks like it wraps around the model instead of just laying there at an angle kind of weirdly. So um, I'll show you the difference. So let's turn this back off so you can see it in, the, in its natural state. And then I'm going to take that plaid texture that I just had and I'm going to drop it on here. So let's take thistle down plaid too and we'll put it on this blanket okay and then we'll take a different one like thistle down plaid 11 put on this blanket it's really not that different and we'll take eight and we'll put it on the little blanket that's there okay so now you see there's three different blankets in there right and there's a little bit of behavior so it doesn't look terrible right it doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look as good as it could. And when you want to make things look um, really, really nice, you want to make sure that you, uh, you have some amount of ambient occlusion. You don't want to do what people used to do, which is you don't want to bake shadows. A lot of times, uh, it was probably about five or six years ago, a lot of 3D models when you bought them had baked on shadows. And so what they did was in their 3D modeling program, they had like... Uh, set up like the where the sun would be and then they had shadows get projected onto it and so it only looked normal when you had it on the sim if the sun was in the same position as it was in photoshop when the guy made or whatever tool it was made that texture so it, it's it's we don't like that. We don't do that anymore because advanced lighting model came along. And so if you didn't have advanced lighting model, then you would go, hey, wow, this looks really good. But if, as soon as you turned on advanced lighting model, you'd go, oh, my God, this looks like crap. What is this? Um, so you don't want to have baked on shadows. But baked on ambient occlusion still looks good even in uh, advanced lighting model. In fact, it looks even better. So let me let me show you about what, what this is going to be and how to, how to do it. So it's not that difficult. Normally when you get a prefab 3D model, it's going to come with some texture files called ambient occlusion files. It usually has like the prefix AO in the file name somewhere. It's like, or they, some people call them shadow maps. It's not really a shadow map. A shadow map is something else. It's an ambient occlusion map. And so that's the ambient light. So there's not like a single light source. Ambient means it's just the ambient light that's in the room, like in a normal normal area. So um, ambient lighting. It means it comes in from all directions, not just from one direction. So it's the way sunlight scatters. So if, you had, if you're in a kind of cloudy day where the sun's not directly shining down and you look at shadows, there's not so many shadows on the ground, but you still have ambient occlusion because there's light coming at you from all directions. Light hits the atmosphere. It scatters in uh, changes direction so you have one piece of light coming in from the left you have another piece of light coming in from the right you'll have some at the top some reflected and coming up from the bottom so you're completely surrounded by light hitting you from all different directions and so that doesn't cast a shadow 
like direct light will. But what it does give you is the gradual shading where two surfaces meet, which is um, where that light becomes dark or blocked. Um, and that's what ambient occlusion is all about. So uh, again, this is what it looks like flat, and this is what it looks like with ambient occlusion turned on. So, you know, it looks pretty good, but it is a little flat. And it's not made to fit this model very well. So the proper way to do this, if you're really, really, really into doing 3D texturing, is you want to do this inside of a 3D modeling software. And so you would either, you know, have something like Blender. You'd have the model in Blender, and you'd put the texture on in Blender, and then what would happen is, as this blanket, which started out as a rectangle, as this blanket bends around the curve of this bed, if you did this in a 3D modeling software, this line wouldn't wouldn't move this way. This line would come down. See, this this line is straight, right? It would come down, follow the curve of the bed, and then curve back out and come out to this point. Um, this is just a flat 2D texture dropped on top of this model and so it doesn't fit very well now I did a really good job in making my uh, model so that w when I did my UV mapping um, I made it so that you can use a square texture on this blanket and it would kind of wrap it so it looks better than uh, it will on a lot of other furniture a lot of things you buy and you use the the uh, you don't, you don't use the ambient inclusion files that come with it, and you just throw a texture on there, it's going to look like garbage. Um, but I, I, I tried very hard to make it look pretty good. But anyway, so that's why it doesn't look terrible while I'm looking at it like this, but we're going to make it look better. So let's go back and turn that off again so you can see it in its um, natural state. Now, we're going to switch over to Photoshop. You can also do this in GIMP, but uh, I use Photoshop. So I have... One, let me go back to the second line for a second. So for each of the different parts of this bed, I created a separate UV map. And then using the UV map, I was able to create an ambient occlusion file, texture file. And uh, I'll show you what those are in a minute. But I created them, for me, I did it in Adobe Substance Painter. So it generates them for me automatically, and then you just export them, and then you upload them into Second Life or into Photoshop. And so let's go do that. So I have one for each um, part, and the way to rapidly get those into Photoshop is you just go to File, go down to Scripts, and then there's a, a script over here called Load Files into Stack. So if you click on that, and then you browse for the folder while well, I'm doing that over there uh, it's here export so these are all of the ambient occlusion files that I created and I'll go ahead and open one so you can see what it looks like this is going to be the top blanket blanket three oops nope, that was a bad thing to do this is I'm, I can't double click and open it I got him I'm putting them in the second life so I'm in uh, Photoshop so let's go ahead and load them into Photoshop and you can see them there so make sure it didn't do blanket three twice Okay, it's there. So these are all the files that I want to bring in. And then you just click OK. And now it's going to load them in one by one. So it's loading each one. One by one, one by one, one by one. I think it's, oops, I thought it was done, but it's not. Okay, now it's done. That's the last blanket. Okay, so this is Photoshop. This is what the image that we're looking at, and we have layers. These are my layers, and each of the different ambient occlusion files went into a different layer. You can do the same thing in GIMP, right? So you can just load this up in GIMP. You could, you could load them individually. Um, this was just a shortcut to get them all loaded in at one time. So this is the one for the blanket, and if I close the eyes, you can't see them. They hide, so I don't see them. And then you can look at them one by one. So, okay, here we have, this is the blanket, the top blanket. This is the wooden base. Uh, this is the underlying blanket. And the dark area is, um, oh yeah, so I should explain what this is. These are ambient occlusion files. So there's a 2D texture that shows you the shadow and light 
that is um, on the surface of this object. So this is the blanket one object. And so you can see that the white areas represent areas that are lit and the dark areas are areas that are in shadow. So because there's another blanket on top of this, the black area represents where that other blanket is. And so if we go back and look at this, you can see it, I'll show you uh, in Second Life. That is this little blanket here. All you see is a triangle piece sticking out there and there's like a little little corner piece here and maybe a little corner piece over here, um, which corresponds to what's in Photoshop. So you have the triangle part at the top, you have a little corner down here and a little corner down here. Everything else is covered up so you don't see it. So black represents the areas that are in darkest shadow. White is areas that are exposed to light. And the gray areas are areas that are going to have a relative amount of shadowing on them. So if I were just to take these AO files and apply them to my object, it would look a lot different. So let's go back in Second Life and do that. So here we are in Second Life. Remember I already put um, these textures on here, but let's get rid of that. So I want to take everything we have here and then just set it back to blank. So now it's back to, there's no texture applied to it. And so you see there's there's very little shadowing going on. And that shadowing is, is being done by Second Life for the eye. Um, okay. So now if I want to go ahead and put these textures, the AO textures on here, I think I already uploaded them. Yep, I did. So I uploaded them here. So um, there's one for each part. So this is mattress. So I'm going to drop that on the mattress area. And see, you can see it looks better, right? So instead of being just a flat white, it actually has shading around where these pillows are. In between the pillows is darker. And along the edge of this blanket, it's shaded as well. So then if I could do, where's pillow one? Is this pillow in the back? Now you'll notice it has a darker area, which is because there's a pillow in front of it that's kind of blocking the ambient light. So it's going to be darker. And then underneath it, down in there, you see it's really dark. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for pillow two, pillow three, pillow four. And then we'll go to... Blanket one is the little blanket in the middle. So now you see how it pops out? This is like putting drop shadows on text when you do like a, when you make a graphic or something and you put a drop shadow underneath it. It makes it pop more, makes it stand out more, um, and it looks a little more natural. And that's what's happening here. So now this top blanket cast a little bit of a shadow down there. So that's why you have a little bit of a darker area there. Um, let's go ahead and put blanket two on, which is the one on the right. And now you'll notice the folds and everything look more pronounced and then there's a dark line at the edge of where the uh, the top blanket hits it and then down by the floor it's even darker we'll go ahead and put blanket three on and as you look around it right it looks like it did when i had advanced lighting it looks like it did when i had advanced lighting and ambient occlusion turned on because i've baked the ambient occlusion onto the texture for the for the surface. So, uh, But you can see the frame down here still looks plain old blank white. So let's go ahead and put the AOs for that on too. So there's the AO for the base. And you can really see the AO part here. Notice how it starts dark and gets lighter as it goes up. That's because it's close to the ground. Um, and where two surfaces meet or come close together, they generate shadows in real life. All right, and then we have the feet. So feet, feet, feet is right here. Okay, so now I've got AO files on the whole thing. And normally, when you buy a prefab 3D model, they often come like this. They often come with the, the AOs already on it. Uh, and then they will provide you with the AOs in a folder. So that's what, this is like I had made this to sell. So I have the mesh model, and I have all my AOs, and I've applied all these AOs. You'll also notice it's not white anymore. It's now a kind of gray. And that's natural. Um, bright white doesn't really exist in nature. Everything has a bit of a shadow to it or a bit of a shading, so it's a little bit off white. And so just by using these AOs, you automatically get that kind of more natural coloration. 
All right, so that's what it looks like. And now if I go to my graphics settings and I turn ambient occlusion back on, well, it, it already has ambient occlusion. But I turn it back on, it still it looks pretty much like it did before. But it's a little bit darker and a little stronger, which actually looks better. So without advanced lighting and ambient occlusion, it still has shadows. With them, it has them, but it looks even better. It looks more real. It looks more realistic. Okay, now back to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, and we have a layer for each of the different parts of my model with their ambient occlusion file, which is what I just put on the model that gave it that kind of gray look with the shading uh, in here. Now I want to take a, some kind of texture and I want to apply it to this so that I can combine the two together. So let's let's find like a cloth texture. So let me do, let me see if I can find a cloth texture. Where would I have those? Animal prints. Let's do an animal print. Yay. No, these are these aren't the very good size. So let's go up and we'll go to cloth, 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 cloth. Where do I hide my cloth? There it is. I have so many textures. Um, let's do like, I need one that that uh, is pretty, is I know is seamless. So let's do like, like this. It's called a really complicated name. It's a 1024 by 1024. Aha, it came in here black and white. Why? Because when I loaded in the ambient occlusion files, they're all grayscale, so it's set Photoshop to grayscale. So I have to go up to image mode and change it to RGB color. And then now when I, oh, what happened? Changing modes can affect appearance, uh, don't merge. Sorry, there was, a, there was a dialog box open and it wouldn't let me do anything. So now I'm gonna go back and put that texture in, if I find it again. There it is. All right, so now you can see it's in color. Well, it doesn't fit. I could stretch it to make it fit just by doing this. Right? But when you stretch it, it loses clarity. It loses a little bit of clarity. Uh, and the green of the image gets bigger which is not really what I want, so I'm going to undo that. I didn't mean to undo the whole thing, just meant undo the resize. Uh, there it is. We'll put it back in here. So instead of stretching it, just put this down in the corner, then hold the Alt key down and drag it over. Oh, i got to accept it first. Then drag it over. Then select both of them and drag them up to the top. Then merge the four layers into one. So now I have one image, and the resolution of the image didn't change, the clarity of it didn't change, the granularity of it didn't change, So, but it looks like one big image. So this is a 2D image. Notice there's no shadows. So if I were to do this and take this image and put it on my model, we would lose the ambient occlusion. It would go back to being a cartoony, flat-looking image. Well, I don't want that, so I want a way to somehow, and this was blanket three, right? So where's blanket three? Blanket three. Right there. So I want some way to combine the texture that's on this layer with the texture that's on this layer. And so Photoshop has a really simple way of doing that. It's called a layer mask. So all you do is you go to the, and you can do it either way, but um, I like to do it this way. I put the, um, my ambient occlusion on the bottom, and I have my texture at the top, but you could do it the other way around. You could have the ambient occlusion at the top and the texture at the bottom. It doesn't matter. What does matter is the one that you're going to change and you're going to put the mask on is the one on top. So whichever one's on top. So like I said, I like to do it this way. So I'm going to go to my texture image here, and I'm going to put a layer mask on it. And the way to do that, it's just this drop down right here where it says normal. So this means right now there's no mask. There's no mask applied to this whatsoever. But if I want to, I can drop down, open the drop down, and then I can choose all these different ways of 
masking these. And this is what it's doing is it's combining the two layers. So it's taking every all the image data that's in the top layer and the image data in the bottom layer of those two layers and combining them in different ways. And so the way that you want to use is called multiply. Okay, so what a multiply layer mask does from a technical perspective is things that are in the in this image that are white, those areas that are white on this image will show through 100%. Images that are solid black won't show through and you'll see this image instead. So anything that's white in the AO mask shows the texture. Anything that's black shows black. And so gray in between does varying degrees of that. So the closer it is to white or the lighter the gray, the more of the texture shows through. The darker it is, the more black shows through. And so it, it literally combines your 2D texture with the shadows from the AO map, and you end up with a texture with shadows. Then all you have to do is just export that. So we're going to export it. Uh, where's export? Export, and we'll just do a quick export as PNG, and I will call it test blanket three. Now we'll go back to Second Life, and I will actually let's do two things. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it without multiply. I'm going to put it back to normal, so you have the flat two D one. Let's export that one too, and then we'll do both of them, and you can compare it. And you'll see it's a subtle difference. All right, this is going to be test two blanket three. Okay, so now let's go back to Second Life and we'll upload both of those. Build, upload, bulk. And I was in this folder, and there they are. Boom, boom, boom. And now I have them. So the test two is the one that has no shadows. So let's put that on first. So right now we have the ambient occlusion, plain old ambient occlusion on there. So you have the shadows, right? Well, let's put this on here and see what happens. Okay, now it's on there and it's flat. It, it still looks good, but something's missing. Your eye sees it and says, something's not quite right here. And you and if you look closely, you'll realize, oh, there's there's no shadows here. There's no shadows down through here. It's the same. It looks the same all the way across and pretty much the same all the way across here. So now let's take the other one, which is the one that we did with the shadows, and we'll put it on there and you can see the difference. Did I do the wrong one? Nope. Select face. Okay, it's there. It says it's doing it, but it doesn't look, it looks, I'm gonna go back to blank. Looks like it's the same file, looks like it hasn't changed. What am I trying to do? Oh yeah. Okay, now. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now I can see there are some shadows in there. There's shadows. It's a very subtle shadow, but there's a shadow here, there's shadows here, there's shadows over here. And there's a little bit of shadows here. This is a darker image, so it's a little harder to see. If I use a lighter one, you might see it more. So let's try it with a different one. Let's go back to Photoshop. And then we'll do multiply on that. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. Let's get a different image. Let's do something like... Um, let's do this one. It's just a woven fabric texture. Oops. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to put it in the corner. Then we're going to replicate it and replicate that. Merge them. I do this so many times. That's why I'm quick at it. 
and we'll set that to multiply. And so uh, I have no image underneath it turned on. It's just a uh, transparent background is all you see. And so whenever you have a transparent background underneath this with multiply, everything shows through. But let's, uh, this is blanket one. Let's turn blanket one on down here. And there you see it. So this is our texture with the shadow. That's our texture by itself. Texture with shadow. Texture by itself. Texture with shadow. And how about if we do the other thing? This is this is AO with texture, AO without texture. See the difference? All right, so let's export that. And we'll call that blanket one test. And then go back to Second Life. Mm -hmm. And we will I called it blanket one test this time. Didn't I? Where did I put it? There, there it is. Blanket one test. And we'll upload it. And drop it on. And now you have that cloth texture, but you can definitely see, because it's a lighter texture, you can definitely see there is a shadow here, and there is definitely a shadow up here. Yep, you can see it right there, right? So if you want to see what it looks like from flat, I'll go ahead and do that again. Uh, blank. So now there's no shadow there, right? In fact, it really stands out now when you... I don't know why it takes so long when you exit out of that, but it does. It really stands out, and you can see it's really, really flat now. And it looks, looks wrong because there's shadows that come all the way out to here and all the way out to here, and then none. So now if we put this back on, aha, now it has shadows and it looks more natural. All right, let's go back to Photoshop and we'll do a different one for the other blanket. I may keep these blankets. I like this. <clears throat> I may actually export this and use it on my new model. Uh, Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop. There we are. All right, now we're going to do blanket two. And let's do another texture of something, something down in here in the deep down in the bowels of my list I have a lot of stuff for bohemian style um, let's pick something I don't know I'm wasting time let's just pick this one all right same thing just put it in the corner and you usually see how the the line around it turns pink. Um, it snaps. To, I have I have snap to grid and I have snapping turned on, so it automatically snaps to this pink line. So I don't have to line it up manually. Same thing when I drag it over, it, it snaps to the midpoint and snaps to the edge. And then this does too, so you don't have to manually line them up, which is a major time saver. Okay, so we merge that. We set it to multiply. And so there I have my blanket. So this is my texture of a blanket on my AO for the blanket. And there's the texture by itself, texture with the AO, texture by itself, texture with the AO. There is the AO by itself, and there's the texture on it. All right, so then we're going to export that. We'll call that uh, blanket to test. And then let's go here. We'll upload that. Blanket to test. And we'll drop that on here. And there you go. Now you can see that this blanket looks 3D. This is very shaded down in here. And oh, that's my that's my body. <laughs> I'm casting a shadow. Whee. Okay. You see, it looks so realistic, right? It looks very cool. Um, so let's do our graphics again, and let's turn back on ambient inclusion. And now look at it. Now it looks really good, right? So let's go ahead and do our sheets up here and our pillows really quickly. Go back to Photoshop. Let's turn on... 
mattress. Let's grab a texture for that. In fact, I'll just use the same one I have. I'll use this texture right here. So that saves you some time. So this is already done. So I'm going to use that for the two pillows on the back row, which is pillow one and pillow two, and the mattress. So I'll just turn all of them on. So this is pillow one. So I just export it. P1 test. Then I hide that one, and I can see I have pillow three. No, I want pillow two. These are in the wrong order. Pillow two, and then we'll export that. P2 test. And then turn that off and have my mattress on. And so I will do mat test. Go back here. Upload those three things that I just created. Bulk. brain fart. Uh, okay, P1, P2 test, P1 test, mattress test. Yeah, I don't know where my brain went there. I was like trying to open something and I was like, what am I doing? And I have no clue. Okay, so drag that on. And now I see the shadows and the texture. P1 is back there, P2 is over there. And it's starting to look real. And the only thing left to do are these two front pillows. And let's put something cool on them, something different. So let's go back to Photoshop. Now we'll turn that off and turn pillow four and pillow three on. And then we'll import something new. Like these work really well. See, these are all grayscale images of different kind of cloth patterns and things. They work really well in doing this. Uh, how about that? I mean, it's going to look the out the furniture is going to look weird with all this different not matching styles, but that's okay. That's not the purpose for this exercise. The purpose of this exercise is just show you how to do it. Okay, again, it's Alt and then drag. Alt and drag. Merge and then turn multiply on and now I have it and I can go export P3 test turn off pillow 3's AO and make sure pillow 4 AO is on export P4 test and go back to Second Life and we're going to upload those two build upload bulk and I'm so glad I no longer have to pay to upload stuff when you get like the, you pay for the higher level membership, you don't have to pay to upload. All right, so put P3 on here and P4 on there. So now you have the texture that you want, which is the, the pattern, the color, and the shadows from the AO. You can see it very clearly on this, especially if we zoom in, you can see how it gets it looks really detailed you have very distinctive shadows you can see the shadows in there you can see all this now just in case you're doubting me and you want to know hey, maybe it wasn't really worth doing all that let's go back and I'll make a copy of it and we'll set I don't want the, the look I have a floor shadow on here so I don't want to do that so I'm going to select everything except the floor shadow and then I'm just going to set it all to blank. And wait for this to close. Mm, there. Any day now. And then they're side by side. But let's go turn our graphics back down. Turn off ambient occlusion. And turn off advanced lighting model. Oops, I didn't save it. Do it again. Turn off. Turn off. OK. All right, so there it is. Very flat. And see, it's so flat, you can't even see where the, pill, the, the blankets 
end because there's no shading at all, right? They just, it's white on white with no shadow. So it's like super flat versus this. And so here you can see it looks, even without using advanced lighting and ambient occlusion turned on, it still looks really good. Right, but when you turn them back on, this is why you need, you know, a nice uh, computer. Oh, what happens if you turn atmospheric shaders off? Watch what happens. It gets even worse. It gets even worse. But mine, with what I did, still looks good. You still have the shadows in between the pillows. You still have all the stuff going on. But when you turn all of them back on, then ba-boom. And you have a very realistic-looking attractive set of textures applied to this model. I didn't do the base and the feet, but we can do them if you want. One last, one last thing. So let's uh, go back over here to Photoshop. Let's go, where's base? Base and feet. I don't want to put a cloth on here. I want to put a wood texture, so we're going to go and then I have something called good wood somewhere. Good wood, good wood, good wood. 2D, let's do, where's my cherry one? Cherry 2048. Okay, so my, there's my wood and I'm gonna set it to multiply. And now I can export it. Base. Test, and then we'll turn off base and go to the feet, export, feet, test, and then go back to second life. You see how fast it is? That's what it, it's, once you have this process set up, you have your Photoshop file set up correctly, um, it's very easy just to drop a texture into Photoshop, set it to multiply, pick the AO you want, export. Bing, 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 boom, 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 and you output them really, really rapidly. Um, build, upload, bulk. Base, where's base, 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 test, and feet, test. Okay, now we're going to put those on here. Uh, base test goes on there, and feet test goes on there. And voila, we have a finished product. We have a really attractive wood grain with shadows, we have feet with shadows, we have all of our textures that look really good. You can, you can see the grain in the, in the cloth, which is nice. You can see the shadows on the edges where things meet. You can see across the surfaces the gradient of the shadow that's there, and it looks really natural and, uh, and quite nice. So anyway, um, that is how you do it. So let me check and see if anybody had any questions while we were doing it. So, well, let's see, where's, where do you find buy textures? Okay, so um, what I found is that the, you know, you can go on the internet, you can go to Google and you can look for stuff, um, but most of what you're gonna get is crap. Or they won't, they put watermarks on it or they want you to pay for it or whatever. Um, but you have to get seamless textures and they need to be square. So. 512 by 512 would look really bad. I would never do that uh, for, for something like this. Um, they're okay for certain applications, but you need at least 1024 by 1024. I tend to use 2048 by 2048 when I do my graphics. Um, and so I use Substance Painter to create my own most of the time nowadays. Um, it, yeah, so that's another thing. So it looks good this way. It looks even orders of magnitude better if you use Substance Painter to create your textures for this. But um, I chose to do it the old fashioned way, which is like five year old way, or actually it's longer than that. But this is, the, this is the Photoshop way. And there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. And if you buy a prefab uh, model, you don't have the ability to do it in Substance Painter. Because to do it in Substance Painter, you have to have the original 3D model, like a DAE file or an OBJ file or something like that, um, FBX. 
if the if the maker of the model doesn't provide that to you, then you can't do this in Substance Painter. The only way to do this is in like Photoshop or GIMP, where you follow this technique. Now, there's there's some other techniques um, that it's the same technique, but there's some additional things provided. So one of the companies in Second Life that does the best job of making making this for 3D models to do it this way is Surge, S-U-R-G-E. This isn't for textures, it's for the models. Because what they do is they take this, this exercise that I just did two levels further. They add a lighting map and a shading map. So they have three. They have an ambient occlusion map, a lighting map, and a shading map. And I, I don't know if I have one. Hmm. I'll do another video showing you how to do it their way. Um, but in order to do that, you have to have the lighting map and the shading map. And, and I don't make those, so I don't use it. Um, but when you do that, it comes out looking even better. And it comes out looking uh, much more like you did it in Substance Painter. So there's very little difference at the end of the day between the output of what you get using Substance Painter and the output of what you get doing it the surge method. There, it looks great, um, and and I, and I can point out some of my furniture that, um, like for example, the the Manhattan bed that I just put out the other day, that was that's a surge model. My kitchen is a surge model, so they look and I didn't use Substance Painter on any of them, but it looks like I did because it's it's really high quality um, output. So it takes this method and extends it even more. Um, so I highly recommend you look into something you know. Grab something from Surge and, and, and play with it and see what you can do with it. But um, the question was about textures. And so where do I get textures? I get them on Marketplace. So uh, you just go on, on Marketplace and search for different kinds of textures. Just make sure they're seamless because sometimes people will, will put textures out there that are not seamless. So what I mean by seamless, and I'll, I'll show you in Photoshop what I mean by seamless um, in case it's not obvious. So... Let's just look at it. Okay, so you remember when I brought this in, it was a little little tiny image, and then I used I reproduced it four times, and it fit perfectly. It only works because this is a seamless texture. What seamless means is that the sides, the top and bottom, form a pattern that repeats. So the bottom of this matches the top of this. The right side of this matches the left side of this. So I'll do it again and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'll do it with like this piece of wood. So there's a wood texture. So um, because it's seamless, I can take the, the left side of this and I can put it over here on the wall and then I can reproduce it. And then all I have to do is take the left side of this and align it to the right side of this and it fits perfectly. There's no seam down the middle. The, it flows across. And the same thing if we go up here, I put the bottom of this one against the top of this one, it, it, that's not right. But if you put it all the way over to the end, it's perfect. And that you see there's no seam here, there's no seam here. But if if this was not a seamless texture, and I, and I have some that are not seamless, uh, in fact, they claim they were seamless, but then when you actually use them, they, they turn out that they're not. Let me see if I can remember where some of them are. I think maybe in Hawaii. Where's Hawaii? Let me look in here. See, these are all seamless. These are all seamless. These are all seamless. Seamless, 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 seamless. These are not seamless. Okay, here's one that's not seamless. Uh, maybe that is seamless. Yeah, that's, that is seamless. Okay, uh, I know I have, I, I have, you find them, and that's how you find them. You try to use them and you go, uh-oh, that's not seamless. And there's a technique you can do to fake it. Uh, you can look at them and see, like, so you have this flower here, there should be a flower on this side that has the two petals, and then there is, so you can tell that's pretty much, pretty much seamless. Now, in, in reality, I think they're not. I think they, they look like they're seamless, but they're not. So same thing here, there's flowers. This looks like it's seamless. Um, what's not? Okay. 
I don't know. This is not, maybe this is not seamless. We'll try it. So if I were to put this in here, and it's also very tiny, right? And then what happens if I do it? Yeah, see, it's not seamless. It should be black to black. It's not seamless. And you end up with uh, patterns that appear, and it, and it doesn't look right. Now, maybe that's the effect you want to have, which is okay. Uh, but I wasn't really going for that, so... I'll make this bigger so you can see it. Uh, control T, drag it up like this, make it bigger. Really deform it. Uh, oh, no, 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 don't do that. There, okay. Mm. Trying to make it as square as I can. Okay, there we go. Now I have it. Say I bought that and thought it was a seamless texture. And, oh, I put it in here and do this and realize, oh no, it's not seamless. Well, I can make it look kind of seamless just by going to one of them, it doesn't matter which one, like I'll do the one on the right. And then you just go up to edit, uh, transform, flip, horizontal. And now it's kind of seamless, but you'll notice there's a little white line down the middle. A lot of times you'll have white lines appear when you, when you even on seamless ones, I have this all the time and it irritates the shit out of me. Uh, when you put them up side by side, there's a line down the middle. So in a lot of times, the way to get rid of the line is just click on the one on the right and move it one pixel to the left. Ta-da, now the line's gone. And then go ahead and merge those two. Uh, and then we can, let's just stretch it all the way over so that it fits. Stretch it up to halfway. It should snap at the halfway point. There it is. All right, so that's halfway. All right, so um, now if I want to do the same thing at the top, right, let's pull that up here like that and go, oh, no, look, it's not seamless. Well, what can I do? Well, I can flip it vertically. Well, flipping that vertically is not going to look right, so let's reverse these. Let's put this at the top, put this one at the bottom, and then I'll flip this one, edit, transform, flip vertical. Now it's seamless. I just made it seamless, right? So now I can I can take this image and I can re reproduce this image and I'll get seamless edges uh, where it'll be it'll be light blue all the way around where they meet. Um, it's not perfect. It's not exactly what you want, but it's a way to take an image that you couldn't say you really want that image, but it's not seamless. Um, you could use it now, and you can get away with it because when you, at the end of the day when you're done with this thing, right? So I'm going to merge these so I can, when I'm done with them, and I set it to multiply, and you put it on something like that, you know, well, ooh, you can see there is a line right there, so I should have uh, I should have lowered it one pixel too. Not only did I have to move it one pixel to the left, I should have moved it down one pixel to get rid of that one white line that I didn't know was there. Um, so you can undo what I just did. You could go, yeah, okay, I will. Let's go back and we'll undo it. Okay, so now it's two pieces. I'll take the top one, drop it down, and then merge them. But now it doesn't fit to the top because I lowered it by one pixel, so you have to resize it. And then I usually go beyond the top and then bring it back down and let it snap to the top. Otherwise, it would have been one pixel short. Okay, now I can do that multiply. And what's that? Uh... Okay, so you can see 99.9% .9 of the image is covered up by black anyway, so it doesn't really matter that it wasn't seamless, but it does because this would have been wrong. The part that you actually see wouldn't look right, but the part that you do see now looks right because I faked it. If I hadn't have faked it, it, would have, it, would have, it wouldn't have been right. So... Covering up parts of it with your AO actually helps, so you can get away with faking it a little bit. And then sometimes it just doesn't matter, especially if it's like a pattern or anything. You could just say, hey, I wanted it to look like that. You know, I wanted it to have this kind of pattern when I was done. You're lying, but you know, no one will know. So anyway, um, that's the answer. So I get my, I get my images on... <laughs> your brain exploded. So uh, I get my images 
on Marketplace. Uh, there's a bunch of vendors. Fabric Lab makes fantastic stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch of vendors. I, what I can do is I can try to find a list of vendors and, and get links for them and put them in the description to this video once it's posted. Um, I have tons. I have tons. I buy them all the time. And and Danny does too. We both collect them. So we, we look for them. Uh, and then we and we buy them, and what you do, you have to export them out of Second Life to use them in Photoshop. So you just save as, save them out to a folder on your computer, and then you can use them in Photoshop, and then you bring them back in. Um, so that's the difference. So you understand, just taking the image that you have and dropping it on the model, it's going to look eh, okay, but it, it it will look unprofessional, it will look amateurish, it will look cartoony. Uh, to people who have, well, okay, we'll look that way to just about everybody, but especially to people who have advanced lighting, um, they might not, actually, they might not notice it because they'll see some shadows. But if you want it to look as good as it can possibly look, this is a technique to help you get there. Again, the best way, going back to what I said before, um, Surge, they do great work, and the way they provide their uh, AOs, they provide three different ones. They provide the AO, the lighting map, and the shading map. And uh, they, they show you, they give you instructions. There's like, they have graphics in there that tell you how to set it up. Um, I can, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find one that I did. Recently, it was Surge. If I can find one that I did, I'll show it to you. Uh, where's that? Pictures. You can't see what I'm doing. I have a browser open and I'm looking like uh, for things. Let's see, which one? Uh, Manhattan bed, I said, right? Manhattan, Manhattan, Manhattan. There's a the Manhattan bed. There's my texture file. Okay, this is my texture file for the Manhattan bed. And so what you'll see is I actually group things. I do all this in my Photoshop. I'm, I'm, I try to be very organized when I use it because it's it's a lot of... You end up with hundreds of layers in here and it's really hard to mess with. So you end up with four layers. You have a layer for your ambient occlusions, your shade maps, and your light maps. And then the fourth folder is uh, where I keep my textures. The actual image, like this Paisley image, is down in there. So I can show you that. See, there's the Paisley image right there. Uh, if I turn these off you can see there it is right there so if you remember i said you could do the multiply on either the either of the uh, image or the ao but it has to be on the one that's on top so with surge the way they do things i always organize it this way um, so you have three files for a part so let's say this is the headboard where's the comforter there's the comforter so let's turn the comforter on make sure everything else in here is off then go to shade maps we'll turn the comforter one on turn everything else off and then go to the light map turn the comforter one on turn everything else off okay and then you can close those back if you don't if it takes up too much room and you don't want to stare at it um, Okay, and then we have, these don't matter because it's underneath it. They don't show through because this one is normal. Okay, and then you have the, the map, the um, layer masks on these different layers are set differently. So if you put the layer mask on the individual file, you have to do it one by one. But if you put them into a folder like this or a group, then you can put the, the mask on the group and you don't have to change it individually. So that's what I did. I put the layer mask on the group, which is multiply. So AO is set to multiply, shade map is set to multiply, and light map is set to screen. That's just a different one of these things. It's called screen. Don't ask me what it does. I don't know. Um, and then the resulting output is what you see on the screen. So if I didn't use the light map and I didn't use the shade map, it looks like that. All right. Did you even notice? It's a very subtle. It's a very subtle change. But you have this and you have that this one makes it darker that's why it's called a shade map so it in addition to ambient occlusion it adds additional shading and then this one light map adds highlights 
so it adds shiny spots and highlights and things like that uh, which just gives more realism and so the output of this when combined with the texture gives you something that looks extremely realistic um, I don't know if you've seen the Manhattan bed let me res it out and I'll show you um, Manhattan Okay, there's my Manhattan bed. And you can see, these are the textures that I'm, I think these are the ones that came with it maybe. Let's see, uh, Paisley, okay, there it is. So that's the texture that I was just playing with in Photoshop. And you can see how, how good it looks and what's our graphic setting we're set to. Yeah, see I don't have advanced lighting on, I don't have ambient occlusion on right now. And that's what it looks like. It looks really good. But if I didn't do it that way in Photoshop, these things would come out looking really, really flat. And then when I do turn on advanced lighting model, it, you see it got better. And then when I add ambient occlusion, it gets even better. Plus I have photo tools uh, settings in here for uh, shadows and stuff that really makes an enormous difference in how things look. You might not want it this dark. You can adjust it. It's all, you can all control that inside of Firestorm. But anyway, that's the idea. So that's how I was able to get these things looking the way they look. Um, one other thing that I meant to tell you earlier that I'll tell you now is lighting in Second Life makes a huge difference. So I have no, no direct light here right now. We're just out here in the middle of the sky on a piece of plywood floating around and I don't have a light source. And it looks like this. Let me add a light source. So to add a light is very simple. You can just do this anytime you want. Anytime you need a light, just res an object. I usually use a sphere. And then go to the Feature tab and hit the Light button, and now you have a white light. Now look at what it looks like when there's a light applied to it. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was the last thing I wanted to show you. So anyway, appreciate you guys jumping in and checking this out. I'm going to um, end the stream now, and I'll probably edit this video, clean it up a little bit, and add some uh, notations to it. And then I'll put some stuff in the description with some links to you know, some good marketplace stores where you can get some textures. Um, like I said, I do use Photoshop. You can use GIMP. GIMP has the same feature. It's called, uh, I don't remember how to do it because I don't use GIMP very often, but it is called Layer Mask, and it's Multiply. So Multiply Layer Mask, that's what you want. And you only put it on one layer. You either put it on the texture or the AO. It doesn't matter, but it has to be the one that's on top. That's the critical thing. So if you do it always, always do it the same way, you won't make a mistake. And if it doesn't work, then you know. So you just flip them. So if you turn it on, it's like, it didn't change. Switch the order of the layers, and, and then you'll go, aha, it worked. Okay, that's it. I am done. We'll talk to you guys later. Where's the button to end my stream? Stop stream. Bye.